Many of us thought that Shadowlands is THE afterlife. But it turns out that that is really not the end, seeing as you can die in the Shadowlands and it is just one part of the entire cosmology chart competing for power. This means that other forces across the universe have attempted to invade it and to take over. In particular, the Warlords on possibly multiple occasions launched assaults on the realm of death. So what do we know so far about these campaigns and what really is the Shadowlands? I'd like to thank Vault for sponsoring this video, they've sent it to me about a month ago, I've used it, it is great, you can fit 12 cards on the side, you can fit cash here as well, and it is so much better in terms of space when compared to this old wallet that I have. There are over 30 colors and styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, there is a lifetime warranty and a test drive for 45 days, meaning if you don't love it you can send it back. If you go to ridge.com slash Doron you can get 10% off as well as free worldwide shipping. Check out the link in the description below. When Shadowlands was announced, I can't be the only one that thought what is the point of Modern Access? Why does the afterlife need a military? Why does it need defending? Isn't the afterlife supposed to be it? Like this is the eternity, this is the end, once you die it is over. Well, as it is pretty obvious, no. It turns out that that is just another force on the cosmology chart and not much else. In fact, other forces across the universe are battling it and trying to shift the balance in their favor. All of this might be too hard to get your head around right now due to Blizzard being purposely vague about all this stuff, but let's focus on information that we do have. The most important bit of evidence is the memory of the Void Invasion Bastion, which you can actually play through as a side quest. It tells us that eons ago, the Void Lords launched a massive attack, not just against Bastion, but against all the Shadowlands in an attempt to shift the balance of the cosmos. This offensive blindsided the Kyrians and embroiled all of Bastion in into complete chaos. The Kyrian were barely able to beat it and the Void was incredibly powerful. How this happened, we don't know exactly. It is obvious that this wasn't an isolated attack on just Bastion as it happened to other realms as well. Was it all of them? How many? It is just hard to say. I'm guessing that Maldanaxis was defeated or overwhelmed or maybe even bypassed as they should be the front line of the Shadowlands so that other forces can't reach it but the Void breached it. This brings us to another interesting bit of information and that is that we can find the monuments to heroes of Maldanaxis, ones that fought and died against the Void Lords. Whether this is related to this same invasion that happened in Bastion we don't know yet but it is incredibly interesting nonetheless. Anyway, in Bastion, after we go through the memory, we are told that there is an eternal tug of war between the cosmic forces of existence. They constantly vie for power over each other, but if one fell, all the worlds will fall into chaos. This to me is incredibly interesting and definitely hints to what is to come in future WoW expansions. I think it also definitely hints to the first ones as all of this really seems to be intelligently designed or designed to barely be held together. This could even be what Sergeras learned about this tug of war, this constant battle, which is why he went insane as a creature of order because he wanted to make everything just neat and tidy. Honestly, to me, Shadowlands seems really artificial as if it was supposed to counter the light and the void. So far, we know that the Shadowlands isn't the only afterlife, but it only seems to be so for the mortal souls. We know that the demons have their own afterlife and so does the void and the light and maybe even the titans. What Sylvanas and this entire expansion hints is that Shadowlands is more than light likely enslaving us and isn't really good at all, which is why they're trying to break it. Good. Two examples are the Paladins Uther and Mograine. Why is the Paladin of the Paladins Uther, the Champion of the Light, sent to essentially just be like an eternal taxi driver for Bastion instead of whatever the Light has to offer? Is the Life of Service really deserving to work for someone else for all eternity in death? I feel like the Light should be able to take him and it doesn't really seem that he has much of a choice in Bastion. As you reach Bastion, you're literally forced to just wipe out your memories, everything you knew in life about your family and just serve them and the Archon all wrapped up in a nice package but the reality is that it doesn't seem to be like you can really choose it which is why there is so much doubt and rebellion that has completely culminated right now. Same is for Alexandros, the champion of the light, the one that did everything to protect his people and fight the scourge that got sent to Mother 
Naxos because, what, he was a good warrior. He's literally forced to defend Shadowlands and it's not like he chose to do that. But Naxos literally seems to be like a mechanism that picks up warriors all across the universe and just uses them as their army. It's not like they didn't have a choice if they want to do it or not. I honestly think that the reason may be that they lost the faith in the light, which is why they weren't sent to the light and they weren't rescued by the light forces. We have seen with Anduin and Nevendred that the light is definitely able to reach the Shadowlands, influence it and even invade. I'm guessing the Void has been attempting to consume the souls and to empower themselves and to eliminate everything as Void's purpose is literally chaos. They constantly attack everything from the Titans to the Legion to Mortal Life, which explains why they also want to invade the Shadowlands. However, the Void honestly seems to be even afraid of death and sees it as the true enemy, maybe even the Jailer. As they reference Sylvanas, they mention that she serves the true enemy and they don't really seem to like death. It makes sense though, as death honestly seems like the most dangerous force in the universe. I think if they took over the Void and Light, they wouldn't have their own afterlife, but they would be forced to become a part of their machinery that was previously set up. At this point, death really just seems like another force in the universe that somehow managed to enslave life, and it's not really even the end as you can obviously die in the Shadowlands, which kind of completely contradicts the purpose of death. It's sort of as if the Void took over life and now every mortal was sent there after death to serve the Void Lords and their own plans. Long ago, the Jailer might have actually done something like this and got way out of control and was literally able to control the entire universe and thus the creators of the said universe, the first ones, set up this entire mechanism to keep him in check so that the cosmology chart doesn't get out of hand. I think if it does, one force would consume everything and it really seems like every force wants to do that, they just want to control the entire universe. The Void wants to attack everything and create a Void Titan and just conquer. The Titans want to order the entire world in their image. The Light also wants to do the same thing and they take over planets. So it is not surprising that Death has pretty much the same agenda, but someone put a lid on them by forcing this mechanism and imprisoning the jail. All in all, I think that everything definitely revolves around the first ones, the original state of things with the Jailer and the Arbiter, and how all these forces in the universe were created. I gotta say that Blizzard did a really good job as the lore right now is just ripe for speculations, and it is hard to get accurate predictions on what will happen as it can literally go either way. I see the future definitely going towards the Void and the Light and exploring the cosmology chart as the story unravels in the Shadowlands. Thank you for watching. Check out whether the Jailer turned Primus into the Rune Cover by clicking on the screen, and also check out the Runs Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time.